I want to take this from a very specific perspective here today, because I know a lot of people watching. Um, you know, God creates us. He makes us exactly how he wants us to be. And there's a whole lot of people out there. You would categorize yourself as a feeler. And mm -hmm. I want to give a definition for that. So a feeler, and we're going to tie this into the discerning of spirits. Uh, a feeler is someone who is very intuitive. They're sensitive, even by nature. They're, they're, they're sensitive to the spirit realm. They're sensitive to other people. They're sensitive even emotionally at times. And but they're intuitive, right? So uh, to be a feeler means you are wired in a way that you may feel things other people don't feel. You may, mm. uh, the world around you may have a greater impact on you, right? So um, because you're sensitive to it. And I know a lot of times, you know, people say, oh, stop being so sensitive. And they look at sensitivity as a negative thing. Like, don't be so sensitive, tough mm. enough, this, that. Uh, but really, sensitivity to God and sensitivity to the realm of the spirit is a gift and it is a very powerful tool that can be used in the right way in a very life-giving way so um so I want to really unpack this for all the feelers out there yeah. a lot of times worshipers of feelers um intercessors of feelers people that are very you know they love worship they love prayer they you know they're usually they're wired as a feeler and they can sense God's presence, uh, but then at times they may even sense the demonic. And and this is, you know, probably a big thing I want to share about today is how do you navigate that when you are mm. discerning the demonic or you're feeling something in the demonic realm? How do you deal with that? How do you, how do you walk that out? All right, that's good. And you know, because guys, I am a big feeler. Um, I unfortunately i say unfortunately but honestly it is it is a blessing because 1 corinthians 12 10 says that there are many gifts and and one of them is the ability to discern and distinguish distinguish between the utterance of true spirits and false ones so it is a gift to be a feeler and the, the word discern there if you just look it up even in the english it means to be able to discern something or someone difficult um, through sight or other senses so, you know, I pick up the demonic a lot. Um, you know, I have dreams about the demonic. I sense the demonic. I, and I know, thank God, you're not only going to talk about sensing the demonic, but also angels, the Holy Spirit. But sometimes I, you know, I wake up and I go, ah, I'm so tired of this. And, you know, because it's so overwhelming. But yet oh. it helps me target the assault that's happening against me and other people. And I'm able to break it off. And I've seen many mega miracles happen through the ability to discern right and and to discern you know if you want to give people like a grid for it it's really to perceive beyond what is readily apparent you know uh you could just look at something in the natural and just see something on the surface but to discern something means you see beyond the surface you see what's happening behind the scenes you see what is taking place um, in the realm of the spirit and also within people. And, you know, uh, so for me, Katie, the first gift of God, we're, we're talking about 1 Corinthians 12, 10, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The very first gift God gave me, I got saved at 14. And then by 15, between that year, 14, 15 years old, filled with the Holy Spirit. And then 15, 16, started getting activated in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the first gift God gave me was this one, the discerning of spirits. And it was like, my goodness, the spirit world became very real to me. I started feeling everything. And I'm going to tell you, I became number one ghostbuster. <laughs> if, there was, if there was a demon there, I found it. And if there was not a demon there, I made it up. <laughs> because <laughs> everything, was, everything was the devil. Everything was demonic. And, and this is where we got to be careful that we don't go to an extreme of, dis of discernment where then it's just, only the demonic and only, you know, yeah. the devil and everything's always the devil. But, you know, I this is a big part of my personal testimony with this gift that that God had to teach me to operate in this gift in a very life giving way so that mm. I wasn't always under spiritual warfare. Now, I'm going to be honest with you for everyone watching today. When I first stepped into this and I started realizing demons were real and I and I felt a demon over here and felt a demon over there and I'd feel oppression here and there, um, you know, it was constant. It, it, I was so open in in the spirit that I I felt everything, and and it was like constant spiritual warfare, and it became so draining, and it became wow. so 
wearisome to be constantly feeling this oppression or that oppression or, you know, walk into a room and feel the demons there. And it it was difficult. And, mm. you know, I used to wreck every family vacation as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> we would we'd be going out. I'll never forget this trip. We were going to the mountains of New Hampshire. <laughs> to stay in a little log cabin to relax for a week. Oh, God. So I'm sitting in the back seat. My parents are in the front seat driving. And, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to go have a nice relaxing time in nature and this and that. And I, I'm in the back seat. Here I am, number one Ghostbuster, thinking <laughs> to myself, okay, when we get into this new state on vacation, I'm going to discern the principalities and powers, and I'm going to tear them down on this vacation. <laughs> and, and I'll be honest with you, my, my spiritual antennas were so developed that we would go cross state line into the state. And I could tell you, what are the sin strongholds of that territory wow. and region? What, you know, what were the demonic principalities, the main ones that operated in that region? I could feel them. I would, I would, I would be in warfare. And, you know, we, we'd go up to the log cabin and I would, and this true story, I would turn to my parents and say, stay here, stay here. I'm going in first <laughs> because, you know, I got to make sure this place is cleaned out before you, we all go in there. So I'd, I'd have my anointing oil in my pocket already <laughs> and I'd walk up to that log cabin and I'd go into that log cabin. I anointed every window, every door, every floor, every wall. I mean, I just anoint the whole place, pray it all out, blood of Jesus, do a Jericho march around the outside. And then, you know, God bless my parents. They just waited in the car for me until I was done ghost busting the house. But you know what? But that was that was me in the beginning. Yeah. When I first started operating in discernment, it was all demonic focused and it was warfare, warfare, warfare. And I would feel oppression and I'll never forget I will never forget the day God spoke to me in prayer. And he said, Matt, you can either live in this constant warfare or you can live in my glory. Come on. The choice is yours. Wow. And I was like, what? I have a choice. I thought, you know, this was my special spiritual gift and other people just didn't understand it. And they just don't feel what I feel. And this is just how life is for me. But all of a sudden, my own thinking changed and, and, and God even confronted my view of this whole thing. And, and God said, no, you don't have to live in this constant warfare. You can live in my glory. So then wow. this was the most beautiful part of my journey where God brought me as a teenager into extended times of worship. And I just started worshiping God. I mean, I would put worship music on in my bedroom and I would for an hour, two hours, three hours, I would just sing and worship God. And I'm going to tell you what happened during that season of worship. God became so big in my vision. God became so magnified to me. It was like God became big and the, the enemy that I was always in conflict with, always warring and fighting, became small. Mm. God became magnified. The enemy became shrunk, really shrunk. God shrunk him down. And in my own self, in my own perspective, it was like as my vision of God grew and as my time in worship and in the presence of God grew, I will tell you what happened over time. I became insulated in the glory. Yep. As I became insulated in God, even though I would still discern things in the spirit, I wouldn't come under those things because here's the thing. God wants you to discern. He wants you to know what's what you're dealing with. He wants you to know what's happening so you can effectively pray and really wage effective warfare. God wants you to have clear discernment, but he doesn't want you coming under what you discern. He doesn't want it coming over you to the point where you feel like you're under it. OK, so this was the, the beginning part of my journey where God brought me to this season of worship where I learned, wait a second, I could be more aware of God and more aware of his glory than I am of the demonic. I can be aware of the demonic. I can mm. see it. I can discern it. But now I'm not living under it. I'm not living under the feeling of it. And that was a major breakthrough for me in my life. Explain, Matt, what coming under warfare means. Can you give us yes. multiple examples of what that looks like? Yes. And so before, 
as I share, as I go into this and share this, I want to say, you know, the, the Bible says that as a man believes in his heart, so is he. Our internal belief systems are very powerful. What the, the grid that you live life with and what you believe on the inside is very, very powerful and it will affect your experiences. And when I used to believe that the enemy could just oppress me or the enemy could transfer to me, if I believed that, it would happen. So, for example, I'll just give you some things um, like I would walk into a room and if there was a demon there, let's say there was even hanging out on someone because people people can carry yep. the enemy on them. So, yep. you know, I call them hitchhikers, but, you know, you can come into a place. And if so, like I would come into a room and I would feel that demonic presence and it would actually come over me to the point where I felt oppressed by it. I would feel heavy underneath it. And it was at times it was like a weight would come on my chest and I'd have a hard time breathing even like it would be like I'd have to, you know, like almost like a heaviness would settle on my chest. Right. I remember another time I was I was in college and I was praying for somebody and I laid my hands on them and I was praying for them. And this was when I was very even demonic focused. And I remember I was praying for them and I could feel off of their body what felt like a snake yep. wrap itself around my arm. And the thing moved from him over onto me. And I'm thinking, uh, and I took my hands off and I could feel this, these things on my arms. And I was like, oh, what? I just got a transference of something demonic. Wow. And then I'd have to pray it through and pray it off. And I was going through these things. I would feel like a heaviness on my breathing. I'd feel some sort of just, because I'm a feeler, right? So I feel everything. So yeah. I would feel it over me. Sometimes I feel things come onto me. But I did believe that the enemy had the power and the ability to do it. Yeah. And God had to really renew my mind. He had to really renew my thinking and yeah. a lot of truth in scripture about where I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ, how I'm over and not under, so that as my internal belief system changed, my experience changed. And it actually broke, it broke transference and it broke oppression and it, and it kept me from coming under those things. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I've made a shift myself, right, guys? You know, it's like, I still see a lot of the demonic on people. I mean, I just walked into a meeting the other day and I saw s snakes wrapped around a guy's arm that had had, you know, gout and rheumatoid for 23 years and pulled it off and he was healed. He couldn't even move his hand. By the time we were done, he could move his hand. All the pain was gone. All the lumps he had on his arm disappeared. And then, you know, same thing. I walked around the corner and there was a guy with a demonic serpent on his foot. And I was able to just pull it off, and he had no more neuropathy, no more um, pain. He got completely healed. So it's like, but God has shifted me. I, I used to be like, oh, my God, there's, you know, it's going to attack me. It's like you, Matt, you know, I, I'm going to get a transfer or whatever. But now it's like I am able to see this because I have the discerning of spirits. But because I'm seated in heavenly realms with Christ, because I'm spending time with the Lord in worship, because I'm constantly soaking, being in His presence, developing a relationship, I'm getting to know more and more and more who I am in Him, who He is to me, how much authority He has over the enemy, and the enemy has no authority, and I'm able to dispense of these demonic powers that are afflicting people very easily, or at least a lot more easy, a lot more easy than I used to.